Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of the Angular Spring Boot course. In the previous episode we saw how we can deploy a Spring Boot application or a Spring Boot API in a dedicated Tomcat instance and in today's episode we are going to do the same thing for our Angular front-end. Now before we begin I would like to remind you that you can subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more software development courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Back to the topic at hand, how can we deploy an Angular application in the same Tomcat instance as our Spring Boot API? Well, luckily for us, there are just three things that we need to do. First one is we need to build our Angular application. And we are going to do that by using the Angular CLI. And in the Angular CLI, we have the ng-build command with its various parameters. So the first step, ng-build. That will give us the artifact that we can deploy in our Tomcat instance. The second thing that we need to do is we need to parameterize some static URIs. Now, right now, uh, when we uh, use the Angular CLI and we say ng build ng serve, we are running our application from a development uh, server. And that development server has some conventions. It runs our application on a specific port uh, in the root context. So we have local host port and that's a wrap. And there are some things that will need changing once we move the deployment to a dedicated uh, server. And last but not least, we just have to deploy that package in our Tomcat uh, web apps folder. Okay, so we have three steps and that's the theory of it. Now let's see how we can actually make this deployment in practice. We'll start by the first step, the build. Now we have our, I had just opened the Angular project and in order to build our project, we just need to type in ng-build. And the ng-build command will create the artifact that we will then deploy. And that artifact can be found in the dist folder of our project. And uh, I'll show you once we finish um, our build process. So ng-build is running. Uh, it might take a couple of time. And then we'll see the artifact. Oh, cool. So ng build finished. Now if we go uh, so I just want to open this folder. So show in Explorer. Okay. I've opened up our project folder and in here we have this dist subfolder where we have the noted ng app and basically this is the output from our build. Now, you notice that we have a lot of files and like I said before, the ng build takes in a number of parameters. So for example, we can say ng build dash 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 prod. And this build is optimized for production environments, meaning it will compress more files, uh, it will bundle, it will do minification. You know, it's not very good for debugging, but uh, it's the recommended way that you build your Angular apps for production. So ng-build can be used locally and ng-build dash dash prod is an optimized version of ng-build for deploying your apps to production. Now it will take a little bit longer. It will perform more static checks. So uh, it's very possible, for example, that an ng-build passes successfully and an ng-build with the dash dash prod argument uh, will fail because there are more static checks and more things that are uh, verified before the artifact is being uh, produced. So please keep this in mind, but otherwise do use ng-build dash dash prod. Okay, we'll just give it some more time. Cool. And now we can go back to the same file, the same folder, and here we can see that we have way um, we have less folders than before and also their size um, is less than before. So obviously the ng build dash dash prod is, is, is optimal, is, is optimized for these kinds of scenarios. Cool. So now that we have um, our artifact, let's see how we can deploy it in Tomcat. I fired up the Apache Tomcat manager and we can see our a noted API service, the one that we deployed in the previous episode, and we kind of need to do the same thing for the noted front end. 
but we cannot use this menu WAR file to deploy because we don't want to deploy a WAR file, we just want to copy the outputs of our build into a new uh, directory under Tomcat. So in order to do that, we need to go to our Tomcat root folder, we need to find the web apps folder and this is the place where we want to paste our applications. So we'll create a new folder, we'll name it note it, okay, and in this folder I want to copy the build output. So I want to copy my Angular application in here, cool, and now if we try to refresh the Tomcat manager, we'll see that we have our application noted which is already started. So that means we can actually browse to it. So it's going to be localhost 8083, but we also need to provide, you know, the name. So in Tomcat, the name of the application is the name of the folder where we copied uh, our artifact. In our case, it's going to be noted, okay? So, um, something is obviously not right, and if you open F12, we can see all these 404 errors. Basically, um, you know, the styles, the runtime, the polyfills, these are files that cannot be found. And the explanation for that is pretty simple. If you look at the request, you see that um, they are being searched for in localhost 8083 uh, without noted. So, um, by default, our Anchor application is searching for them in the root context, exactly as it did when we were under development. But now that we've deployed our application uh, into a subdirectory, um, you know, it fails to find our uh, these dependencies. And the fix for that is quite simple, but you need to know it. So, we'll go back to our web apps, note it, and we have to find the index.html file. We're going to edit it with, you know, Notepad, Sublime, whatever. And once you open this file, you'll see that there is a base href uh, element in here. And this element is set to the root context. Now, this is the reason why all of our polyfills, all of our JS and CSS files are being searched for in the root context instead of the noted context. So we need to change the base href to note it or whatever name you gave your Angular application. We need to save this file. And now if we reload our application, we actually see that um, you know, our CSS and JS files are being loaded, which is a pretty good sign. However, uh, we can also notice that we have, you know, uh, we have some errors here, meaning uh, we have some API calls that um, are being directed to the wrong URLs, and we'll fix that now. If you look at these errors, we can see that our application is performing some HTTP requests to localhost 882 API notebook soul and you know, localhost 882 API node soul, but basically the base um, API URL is localhost 882-API and when we deploy our application in Tomcat our production API is some, looks something like 8083 um, I think it's noted service API notes all or API notebooks all so obviously we have a different um, base uh, a different API base URL than the one that our application uses currently. And this is something that we need to change. So if we go back to our code, we can see that we set our base URL to something like this. Now, one solution would just be to, you know, eliminate this, paste in, you know, our new production API and that's it. But obviously once you do this, our application will no longer work uh, in the development environment. So we have to be a little smarter than this. Uh, there are multiple ways of solving this problem. Uh, one solution that I like is that in the index.html file, I like to add a little script tag and I like to put the API base URL you know, as a 
global variable that can be then be replaced by a build server or just by modifying the index HTML without having to modify JavaScript files and then recompile the code. So I'm going to take this snippet of code just to speed things up and I'm going to uh, paste it in here. Okay, so it's just a simple script. Basically, what we are doing is we are setting up a global variable called config API base URL and we are giving it, you know, our production um, value. Now, uh, when we want to use our development environment, we just need to override this value with, you know, localhost 8082. But the modification is done in the index.html file and not in JavaScript files that need to be compiled. Also, because the index.html is available as a build output, uh, in a continuous integration build process, we can then find this string, find this line of code, and replace this value, you know, uh, programmatically with our production U URL. So. Um, it's easier for us in development and it's definitely the way to go if you want to use continuous integration in Jenkins or TeamCity or, you know, your um, deployment pipeline of choice. So this is step number one. Step number two is uh, we don't need to have this hard coded anymore. So we can say that the base URL is a property on window called config API base URL and we are just going to append you know API and now if you use localhost 8082 it will work in development if you use the production URL it will work in production so the only modification that we need to do to switch the base API URL is in index.html now <clears throat> I'm going to do an ng build dash dash prod again and this time I'm also going to teach you a new trick. Remember that uh, earlier on um, we used ng-build dash dash prod and then we opened the um, index.html file and modified the base href. Well, uh, it's good to know that ng-build also has a parameter called base href and we can provide a value of our choice from the build CLI so we, we no longer have to modify the base href manually and this is a pretty good thing and just to demonstrate it I'll use it now and we will get a production artifact with the base href set and then all we need to do is you know we need to play around with the um, API URL cool Our application or deployment is done we'll go to dist okay Let's open up the index.html just to prove our point. Okay, so you already see that the base href is set to noted by default just by using the CLI and now the config API base URL is the value that you want to use in production. So that being said, we can go here in our Tomcat web apps, we have noted. Uh, let's undeploy this application and we can do it either in the folder or go in the Apache Manager and undeploy the Notit app. And now we have to basically redo the process. We'll create a new folder, call it Notit, and then copy paste the artifact in here. Okay, just do this for all the items. Refresh it, okay. So obviously I think something the session stuck or something. So I have noted it's been reloaded and now if I go here to my noted application well now everything should be working just fine. Let's just see that is the case. So we have our notes, we have um, our quotes, we have the default note, we have the code note, we have all of our notes, we can, you know, we can query, uh, we have our feedback, so obviously our application is now deployed in Tomcat. And 
this is how you deploy you know a spring boot api and an angular front end into a dedicated container instance now there are some manual steps involved but i think it's a good idea to learn them because um, in order to automate a build process you first need to understand how to manually deploy your applications to a production server before we close i would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the romanian coder youtube page and click on the subscribe button also if you found this video useful please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you have any comments thoughts or ideas for new courses just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because i would love to get feedback from you guys you can also find me on twitter at romanian coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com until next time have a great day and write amazing code goodbye